So guys, this stuff is really cool stuff, right? And you can use a servicer like HomeKey to set up a situation where you literally can send us the payment history, servicing notes. You can send everything we need, all the data points to get to. But before you get to that, I want to make sure you guys figure one thing out. Please make sure that you're understanding that if you're selling a note that you into it for 40 grand and we price it 50, understand that 10 grand may not be a big amount, but if you can do that four times in one year, that snip of the return is amazing, right? So you've got to make sure that your price, when you see an offer from us, calculate that as an annual return versus a one-time lump sum ROI. Because that will dramatically increase your returns no matter what you do. And you could do this, if you could do this four times a year, season it for two months, sell it to us, season it, sell it over and over again, that 10 grand on 40 multiplies. And and yes, we're more than happy to buy notes from you all through the year, any day. <laughs> <laughs> Twice on Sunday. I, I, yeah. tell you, I tell you guys a funny, a funny thing about the servicer. I, I was, because I've always used a servicer and I didn't know that there was any other way. Um, I had no idea how much my, uh, the, my borrowers actually paying. I didn't even know that they were paying for the servicing. I know we originally put it in there, but I had to actually reach out to Sohail because he services my notes. And I, I got, I got one of their statements and I was like, oh, well, this makes sense. I was worried about taxes and all this other stuff. And all that stuff was just taken care of by Sohail and just made it so much easier. And again, the borrower paid for it. Hey, there you go. Excellent. Nice. So um, just looking at some of the questions we got here, um, what states that servicers cover? Um, understand the fact that you're right. Servicers are technically licensed in certain states and don't need license in other states. Every servicer is a little different. Um, some servicers are not in all 50 states, but you may not need all 50 states. If you're originating notes only in Texas, that's all you care about, right? I know Justin uses SoHow and HomeKey. If you're originating in, in Texas, just call HomeKey and they can do it. I know SoHow is working on adding additional licenses on, um, but yes. So yes, states for servicers matter. So um, I know we had another question from Michelle about... Um, servicing services i would say that your services from your servicer is more about tracking the note right they're not going to do the, the they can sign up for door knocks stuff like that but they're really just your property manager to collect and deal with issues and they i would have them do in, in yeah have them do more than less yeah. um they're set up to handle all kinds of stuff but but you're right dave mostly it's it's taking care of the payments and everything surrounding the payments. That's, that's the servicer's main job. Uh, so uh, right now you guys are in Texas. Are you guys looking to get licensed in a few more States as well? Yes, we're awaiting licensing in uh, Georgia, Tennessee, Ohio. Um, and then in January we'll apply for Florida as well. Um, additionally, we will enter Virginia, Colorado and uh, Indiana in uh, February as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and you're so very familiar with North Carolina. So what is the problem with North Carolina? <laughs> I am not a big fan of North Carolina yet. Um, they are a little bit strict. Their, their audit requirements, uh, from what I've heard from other servicers, do tend to be a little bit challenging. And what's worse is the audits do happen every two years at a minimum, and their auditor prefers to come down over to your home office, sit there and audit the books versus just doing it from North Carolina itself, because all our records are online anyway, and we have to pay for their expenses, their flight, their hotel, their food, things like that. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but we do know other servicing companies that cover... North Carolina, South Carolina. Yes. Oh, perfect. There's some really good servicers that do cover those states. Yeah. We'll be happy to help um, you. Yeah. We actually, I have a list of them on my due diligence portal, portal.jkpholdings.com slash servicers. You can find it there, the list. Um, but I want to make sure that you know that SoHow really work with owner finance investors. He understands your world. That's why we brought him on. We work with a lot of servicers. A lot of them will get the paperwork from these kind of people and actually push them away. 
because it's not as clean cut as Bank of America, right? That makes sense for everyone. It looks um, a little different. It's yeah, paperwork is a little bit different, and yeah, they just they just want quick and easy. Yeah. Uh, and then there's other ones that'll dig in and look at the actual documents uh, individually because that often is what it takes. So I'll feel free to put in the Facebook chat also the your website too if you want. I know you're on there as well. Um, Alex asked a question. Um, any issues buying a note that's in first that has a second, third, or anything else behind it? Are there discounts that come with that? Do you even care about the supported notes? Straight answer? Don't. Not really. The only time that comes to play is if we go to foreclosure, right? And it actually comes to sale, their notes are going to get paid, but we're going to get paid off as well, right? We're going to get our unpaid balance, say it's 60 grand and we foreclose on it. We're going to get our 60. We can't collect anything above our unpaid balance or legal balance. Sorry. We can't collect if it sells for 100. We can't collect the, the equity on that. Right. If it reverts back to us, we get the equity, but we don't get the equity or any proceeds above our legal balance because we're not entitled to that money. So these answers, no. No, don't care. The the things that we would care about is um outstanding taxes or municipal liens, things like that. Uh those place above a first lien in order of priority. So those things affect our bottom line. So yes, we care about those things. But any subordinate liens, seconds, thirds, whatever, no, doesn't doesn't really make a difference. Man, All there's right. so much more to cover. Yes, oh, this is great. <laughs> I love the conversation you guys are having. I love the fact you guys are asking a lot of questions because this is a field I've talked with Justin numerous times, and he's still learning what we're talking about at the time because it's a new world of, of stuff. And we're looking to do a webinar, and hopefully you guys all stay tuned. It, we do webinars every other week, but we've primarily been focused on note buyers and teaching them stuff. Um, so we wanted to, were we working on getting a webinar on there about how to create a note, a successful note to make sure you're licensed correctly. And that's why we'll bring on Max and stuff like that to talk about what you can and can't do, such as the Dodd-Frank laws, right? Mm -hmm. You can't write a note to an owner, owner occupied property without certain restrictions there. Things like that will come into play. And we'll talk more about that stuff on the upcoming adventures. Just out of um, curiosity, Justin, Melissa, do you guys have you heard of Don Frank? Do you know what that is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just mean, yeah, I've, heard of, of I've heard of him, but or I've heard of it. <laughs> okay. But um, I get that it has its place. Um, yeah. All right. The, the no, biggest, the biggest thing for me, for for me, is my understanding is that the limitations of of how many notes that we can create that we can originate. Um, without having a, a, an originator's license. Right. So Dodd-Frank um, is a very big, big legal document. And there's things that we don't fully understand either. That's part of it. Max is the expert. Uh, I always defer to him when I've got questions. I'll call him and say, hey, can I that's, do this? That's, yeah, that's, that's the main reason I even use an RMLO and an attorney. I'm just say, mm -hmm. hey, here, make sure I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Max, if you can chime in real quick, what do you guys charge for underwriting a note to make sure it's Dodd-Frank compliant? Yeah, great question, Dave. Um, standard underwrite is six seventy nine, dollars um, and that's a, a bona fide fee that can be passed on to your borrower, uh, but your borrower can't pay it before being offered a loan. And so uh, one of the lending laws um, uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act and Equal Credit Opportunity Act, so FACRA and ECOA, state that uh, you're not allowed to charge anything to a borrower prior to offering them a loan, except for the only fee that's transferable to a borrower up front is a credit report fee. And in our case, we pull the credit for you, so you can't even charge that to your borrower. So a standard Dodd Frank underwrite is $679. We invoice you in two pieces. We invoice you 119 up front, and then we uh, get with your borrower and we gather all of the documents necessary for a, a file. We work the file all the way to completion. Um, and then if we can get your borrower to meet Dodd-Frank requirements and certify them, then we would invoice you the final 560 at loan approval. So on the loan estimate, 
um, or the old uh, HUD one, if you're familiar with old style lending, that loan estimate, um, you as the lender have to disclose all of the costs of credit to your borrower. And so that 679 underwriting fee would be added onto your borrower's column uh, as one of their loan origination expenses. So you would front us the 119, we'd get your borrower qualified and then at closing, uh, that other 560 would uh, you know, actually, basically uh, the entire 679 would be a borrower's closing cost. So you can recoup that cost uh, at the closing table. Nice. Awesome. And I know I, Max has been extremely helpful for me yeah. when I'm doing some originations. And, and like I say, I've gone to him with questions. Can I do this? Is that okay? And he'll let yeah. me know, yeah or nay. Uh, and, and, and just a quick uh, side yeah. note to uh, Nathan, for anybody that doesn't know, um, we don't just underwrite for Dodd-Frank. So uh, I do a lot of commercial work and a lot of uh, non-owner occupied work. And so if you're ever in question as to why would you want to underwrite something if the law doesn't make you, um, I, I could have a discussion with you and give you a lot of good reasons why. Uh, just in a nutshell, though, a couple of the big ones would be like, for instance, we have an investor in New York that buys a lot of uh, apartment buildings and basically flips them and, and resells them to other investors. They can be speculative ventures. We underwrite his borrowers to his standard. That's the beauty of non-owner uh, occupied is then Dodd-Frank is out of the picture, CFPB is out of the picture, and you and I sit down together as an investment team, and we set the criteria that you want us to underwrite your borrower by. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're uh, ensuring your best interest from a uh, risk of default standpoint. Uh, the other thing that it's doing is it's creating a consistent um, due diligence uh, file for your ventures. And then when you want to go and resell those notes uh, to somebody like Nathan and David, um, we've got files that you can present to those note buyers that demonstrate the professional consistency uh, with which all of your borrowers are vetted uh, and that can bring a lot of value to your note. Awesome. So uh, Max, so for those who don't know, uh, Max is call the underwriter. Uh, you can go to call um, He's He can talk about all this stuff in much more detail uh, than we can. Uh, I know Michelle is asking about that. Sydney, thank you for jumping in there. Uh, I appreciate that. So all that good stuff. Thanks, Cindy. Michelle, I just wanted to come back to your question about, so you act, you actually act like refinancing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We want to refinance you so you can go out and go and buy, you know, create more notes and then sell them to us again and again and again. Yep. Uh, take whatever profit. We don't care. Yes. <laughs> we want you to make a profit. Uh, we're in it for a, a different reason. So we're more than happy to have you make a profit off of us selling it to us. And then you go out and do it again and again and again, and we'll buy those all day long. Yep. So what, what makes it a valuable note? We won't get into the legal side of it, but understand the fact that for us, we have performing and non-performing assets and those need certain data points to figure these things out. We're going to go through them quickly here, but uh, again, in the chat, there's a whole Click this the form link, click on it. You actually go to a form, fill it out real quick for us. Um, phone number is not required, but that will actually send you an email out directly from jkpholdings.com. If you don't get it, reach out to us and we'll go from there. But what they'll do is it give you a link to either PDF or spreadsheet that you guys can get and actually just fill it out and send it to us if you want to. Make it nice and easy for you. So what do we need and what do we not need? Let's we'll start with what we don't need. Um, it, it's it's comical because in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of notes from Excel Refinance coming up to this webinar. I don't need to know what kind of fridge is in the kitchen. Yeah. Don't care. I don't care what rehab you did. I don't care the borrower was a locksmith and his grandmother was the mayor. I don't care. Credit score. Oddly enough, I don't care. 
we actually care very little about the borrower themselves. Yep. 